Look, mom, no hands. Who is this? <laughs> Look who made it outside, getting some fresh air and vitamin D. Oh, it feels really nice. It definitely wasn't easy getting out. I can't believe how difficult those two steps have made my life, but I'm definitely appreciating full-time wheelchair users a whole lot more now. Oh yeah, by the way, happy Monday. Welcome to the week. Say hi, mama. Hey, happy Monday. <laughs> I never wanna go inside. Look at my brand new ride. Isn't this awesome? This is so much better than the desk chair. Now I can just ride on this, going back and forth to the bathroom. And I'm pretty sure it's saving all of our sanity. I'm definitely still getting used to it a little bit, so I'm kind of smacking into some walls still, but it is so much smoother. It doesn't make any noise. And it's even got this fancy little basket underneath to hold my pumps. My saline pump in there and my feeding pump. That way I don't have to worry about carrying them when I'm scooting. I guess I never even really thought to get a rollator. We've talked about rollators for me in the past, but it never really fit my needs. Now, it is exactly what I needed. And we kind of just got it by accident. My aunt's mother had been using it and couldn't use it anymore. So my other aunt came over today with it to see if it was something that I could use. And I was like, yeah, that's literally exactly what I need. So that was great timing. I am very stoked. Good morning, all my loves. It is Tuesday and you guys already know what that means. It is a physical therapy day. I am just getting up and dressed and ready to leave. This rollator has made getting ready so much easier. I thinking love this thing. It's just so nice when you find something that just really helps. Also, yeah, gate belts are the fashion accessory of the season, I guess. It has actually come in majorly handy. I mean, my dad pretty much just like lifted me up the steps yesterday in this. So I actually do recommend wearing a gait belt as an EDS patient who is recovering from surgery because obviously if you're having an issue or you're falling, the first thing people go to do is grab you by your arm. And honestly, that's one of the worst things that they can do because they're just gonna pull your shoulder right out or your elbow and in my case, my neck. So having something like this with handles to grab onto has just really been helpful. And I think it's given my caregivers a lot of peace of mind knowing that there's something safe to grab onto in case I need it. But anyway, I should go and finish getting ready. But I did just wanna say, I was just like watching over my vlog from last week that I uploaded yesterday. And I'm so sorry about how badly edited it was. I was having so many issues. All my files got corrupted for some reason. And so then, I thought everything was fixed, but it looks like I lost the whole intro and some of the captions just defaulted back down to like description or something like that. Plus, I wrote March instead of April. That was just a goof. So this week I'm definitely gonna be putting a little bit more work into my editing. I think I was really slacking on that last week. I need to remember to do a little bit of editing every day. And for some reason I always leave it to the last second. And then when I have issues, it's like, uh, Oh well, I can't fix them. So I'm definitely gonna make this week a little bit better. Okay, gotta go, bye. We are home, we are home. Guys, let me tell you, I'm getting awfully tired of car trips. It was nice getting to talk to my dad and catch up with him, because these are really the only times that we get to talk. But it's really hard traveling after surgery. But it was so, so worth it today in physical therapy. I've been having problems all week with the blood flow in my head. I know you guys know that I have some issues with the general flow in my brain and in the blood vessels around it. And I was noticing some of those symptoms were getting a little bit worrying. And uh, my pain doctor was kind of worried about it too. And I just really don't want to go back down the surgery and stenting route. You know, my doctor wanted me to maybe go see my surgeon. I was getting a little bit worried I was gonna have to do that, but I went to Trish and <laughs> I felt better. Like immediately, my vision is like 90% better and my headache is like 
at least 50% better. And my cognition is like much sharper. So I'm really not super worried anymore. If we can manage those symptoms here from home naturally and not surgically, that is obviously the best. I was just all kinds of twisted and in pain today. And I think one of the big problems is it's just not something that you think about when you have spinal fusions, but when you are fused, your, your spine moves as one piece. And in my case, my spine and skull are also fused. So that all moves as one giant piece, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Every little movement that I make affects my entire body. So the fact that I have been only weight-bearing on one leg completely twists my pelvis. And as soon as my pelvis twists, everything twists and believe me it feels exactly how it sounds i'm really glad we went today i mean also we had missed out on our friday appointment last friday so that i could see this new pain doctor so i i just needed to tune up and now i'm all good i think now i am going to settle in take some meds and then finish editing my little lush video that i made for you guys Oh good, the meds have arrived. It's like room service I'll here. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Alright, so my mom just brought in the meds and I took them and hopefully that's going to help with some of the tightness and spasms in my leg from the car journey. It is so weird. So I know I told you guys that after I had the spinal anesthesia for my surgery, I was feeling a little bit of like phantom limb. Like I just couldn't quite understand where my leg was in space. And I still feel like that. Even though all of the anesthesia has worn off and like I can feel my leg if I touch it and stuff, I still have the overwhelming sensation that my knee is bent. It literally feels like it's still in the exact same position it was in when I had the spinal anesthesia administered. I can see it's perfectly straight and yet I totally feel like I'm curled up right now. It's just so weird. I'm sure it'll go away once I start moving my leg again and using it. I wonder if some of it has to do with the fact that they completely like moved the nerve. Maybe the nerve just like doesn't even know where it is anymore either. <laughs> but anyway, last week I know you guys could probably tell from my vlog that I was feeling kind of frustrated with my situation and I've been thinking a lot about it because I don't like to feel frustrated. <laughs> so, you know, I've been trying to process those emotions and figure out what really was the root of it and how I could change that. And I think I was just feeling like the only thing I could do was to rest. And to me, resting meant doing nothing, and doing nothing felt unproductive. And I think that's something that a lot of us struggle with, with chronic illness. We just feel kind of useless sometimes. And, like, we're not contributing, or we're not being productive. Or, I was saying to my mom the other day, like, I just feel like a big burden on the family. And I felt really guilty because I wasn't able to pull my own weight, and I was just asking so much of everybody and really was just so unable to give back. And of course, she was so kind about it and assured me that I am never a burden and ultimately everybody wants to help out and wants to see me do well. It's just that it can be hard and it can be stressful and my needs are pretty great right now. They won't always be this way. And really that the best thing I can be doing right now and the most productive thing I can be doing right now for our family is to recover and heal. Obviously, I've just been thinking a lot about that and trying to figure out ways to make recovery feel less like doing nothing and more like doing something for my overall well-being. So I've recommitted myself to my meditation. I've been using my Headspace app again. I finally got the go ahead from my pain doctor to restart all of my vitamin patches. He was quite pleased with how much they actually helped my vitamin level. He wrote all the information down. He was so excited. So I'm restarting those because I had to step those for surgery. And I've been making sure to stay on top of my blood thinning injections and doing all of my incentive breathing techniques to make sure that 
I'm expanding my lungs, all of this inactivity, especially after a surgery. Isn't that great for your lungs? I've been doing extra journaling. I requested some little physical therapy exercises that I could still do. So I've been doing those. I got outside yesterday for a little walk slash roll around the block. And I plan on doing that every day, except today is snowing a little bit right now. But basically, I've just been trying to find ways to make recovery feel less out of my control. You're probably tired of hearing it. It always comes down to control with me. Control freak, we get it. But it just really, really helps me mentally to feel like I'm doing something and that I'm playing an active role in taking care of myself. And of course, if I'm feeling better mentally, that can really only affect me in a positive way physically. I mean, last week was kind of a rough week for everybody. We're still ironing things out, learning to work together as a team. But I feel like since last week, we've already made great strides, both personally and as a family. And I hope that it can really just continue in that direction as our relationships grow. This isn't gonna just go away. So it's something we have to learn to face, but we are so much stronger facing it together. It is Wednesday morning and today is my very first post-op appointment for my knee. I definitely have a lot of questions since I never really got to talk to my surgeon about my x-ray and some of the various things I did while I was in surgery. So I'm very interested to hear what he has to say and I'm excited to see how I'm healing. They're going to do an x-ray and I guess by the x-ray they can make sure that everything is a-okay in there and healing like they want it to. So this means it's been exactly two weeks since my surgery. So I guess I'm halfway done with the non-weight bearing. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask him today what my plan will be moving forward. Cannot wait to get moving again and get up and just... <sighs> I don't know, but whatever he says, I want this to fuse well, so I'm going to be very careful and follow his directions and just trust that he has my best interest in mind. So this is what your knee joint actually looks like. It's not really necessarily what you picture when you think of a joint. Here's your kneecap. Here's the bone, the fibula, that was giving me a problem. And so this was moving too much. So they put a screw in right here and then they put like bone putty around this. So this will all fuse into one piece. And then he said that they cut that piece out of the bone so that it doesn't affect my ankle. Cause he said if you fuse it just here, every time you step down, it like affects your ankle down on the other side so they cut pretty much like this actually they cut right about here they cut a little piece out and then they just left the rest in there definitely interesting surgery and it's kind of shocking to look at the x-rays but i think that we're gonna have a really good outcome so i'm not quite sure where my last little clip cut out i was just filming on my iPhone in the doctor's office. I got my x-rays done. I saw the doctor. He looked at my x-rays and was quite pleased by what he saw. He said everything is healing nicely and it's in the right place. He was just explaining 
why the heck the bone looked so funny. He was just saying that if they had left the bone intact and then just fused the head of it, that the fusion wouldn't really have a very good chance of taking. And when I say that, I'm talking about the bone matrix or bone putty or bone stimulation stuff, whatever you want to call it. When you have this type of surgery, whether it's my spinal fusions or now my leg fusion, the fusion itself isn't really the hardware, which some people don't really understand. So like the, the screw is not the fusion. The fusion is still taking place and that is between the bones. The bones themselves are fusing together. They put this like putty made out of bone and usually bone marrow and they pack that around the area to stimulate that process, that fusion process. So when I'm talking about not being able to weight bear and not being able to move because I don't want to mess up my fusion, I'm not talking about my hardware. I'm talking about the actual fusion of the bone which takes time. Especially with EDS patients, it takes a little bit extra time for us. We just don't heal so great. The great thing about that is that if we ever have problems with hardware down the line, usually they can take the hardware out and the fusion will still be there. He said on this one, the hardware could probably come out after about a year if I need it. For now, everything looks good. Everything seems to be going as planned. He's going to see me in another two to three weeks and then maybe I can start doing some weight bearing and then maybe a little bit of bending which is exciting. But he was just saying if they left that bone intact then it would make it harder for that fusion to take because all of that movement would still be happening because it would still be attached at the ankle. And our number one goal was just to just make sure that we preserved that nerve and nothing was getting in the way of it and it looks like we were very successful and great news guys I can get it wet now I thought I was going to have to wait two more weeks but he said I can take a shower I think I can even take a bath very excited okay so we are just getting home now and I'm getting settled back in but when we pulled into our street our streets a very small street um, that was bothering me um, when we pulled into our street there were all these like police cars and ambulances and fire trucks and I was like oh no what's going on I'm like mom get your phone make sure Lauren's okay Lauren's fine I guess what happened was our next door neighbor who we don't really know very well because they just moved in um, his doctor had called an ambulance for him saying that he needed to get to the hospital right away and then they got here and no one answered the door and so they like busted into the house and all this stuff and there's no one home. So my sister was like talking to the police because there was like police in our driveway. My mom talked to them. Unfortunately, we don't really know them since they just moved in. So we don't have their contact information and stuff like that. But we do know that the husband has a history of health problems and cancer and stuff like that. And so I'm thinking maybe he like left a message or emailed his doctor and the doctor just called emergency services. That's the best scenario I can think of. Hopefully he's not trying to like drive himself to the hospital or something like that. We're just praying for him and trying to get in touch with someone who might be able to help the situation. But anyway, that was just really nerve wracking thinking maybe it was my sister. This is a good lesson. I think if you guys are having any kind of emergent medical symptoms, I think it's just best to go to the ER. I know none of us ever want to. And honestly, I know that a lot of times they can't really do anything, but sometimes it's better safe than sorry. Emailing or calling your doctor in times of emergency, I guess, isn't the best way to do it, because then you're gonna need a new front door. Okay, I was told that these hospital bracelets are some kind of magical hospital bracelets, where when you're done with them, all you have to do is pull this tab and they come off. You don't have to cut it off. So I'm really excited to see if that actually works. I don't get it. We'll pull it like this. I think I was lied to. Oh! Hooray! <laughs> I don't know if that was magic, but 
it's off. Ugh, this stupid feeding tube the Mediport opened up on me again and just absolutely <laughs> soaked me through. Ugh, disgusting. I had it taped and everything. Why? Oh, I'm here to say goodnight to you guys. I don't know why today felt like a particularly long day. I am drifting off into sleepy land. But before I do, I just wanted to keep you guys updated on something I haven't talked about in a little while. A couple months ago, I started the medication Katodafin. It is a specially formulated medication. It is a mass health stabilizer. That was one that I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be able to continue to tolerate it because it just made me feel very sleepy and I was having a hard time getting up. Those symptoms did eventually lessen quite a bit. I am not really experiencing those anymore. So now that we got all of this new stuff out of the way, it's time for me to focus on that again. I have been taking half of the dose that I was prescribed, so I've been taking it once a day. And I was prescribed to eventually be taking it twice a day. So tonight will be my first night having taken it twice. I'm expecting to feel a little bit extra sleepy. I'm actually already feeling that extra sleepiness kick in at night it might be a really big blessing but i am expecting to have some of those side effects again and to have to get used to it but at least now i know that my body tolerates it and that i can get used to it if i just tough it out so i might be a little bit extra sleepy these next few days but i'm still noticing positive improvements from the medication i really think it's helping a lot of my congestion and my post nasal drip which is amazing i've never found anything that really helped that if taking it twice a day makes even a bigger difference that obviously would be great my immediate goal with it is for it to help me to tolerate some of the other new medications that i was just prescribed by my pain doctor and maybe even a little bit of food or at least help me to be around the smell of it we will have to see I'm falling asleep, so I'm gonna say goodnight. Good morning, you guys. It is Thursday. My mom and I just got off of the phone with disability. We have been playing phone tag with them for probably a year. It is impossible to get a live person on the phone. We finally did. You guys ask me all the time if I receive disability payments, and the answer is yes, I do. I have been since I was 18. That is when we applied. I'm not going to talk about how much I get per month because that really varies from person to person, but I actually was accepted on my very first try. We didn't have to get a lawyer involved. It was actually a really easy process once we got all of the paperwork filled out, which was nice. I was expecting a fight, to be honest. I was expecting them to say that I wasn't disabled, but that wasn't the case. I was immediately approved. We have a handicap parking placard I have hope that a diagnosis of i think at the time it was just eds and pots can qualify you for disability if all of the other parts go correctly like, like your interviews and your doctor recommendations and stuff like that so yes I do receive disability. The call today was just making sure nothing changed and that I just haven't run off and gotten married and gotten a job in the last couple of years. But seriously, like phone calls for me are so stressful. I hate them and I avoid them at absolutely all costs. Because of my auditory processing disorder, just a little bit slow when it comes to understanding what people are saying and I rely a lot on lip reading. So phone calls can be hard and I just get extra stressed out when it's an important phone call where I can't just like pretend my way through half of it. I really have to make sure that I fully understand the questions and answer them correctly. Otherwise, I could lose my disability if I just said yes or no to the wrong thing. Anyway, it's over now. Everything went well. I gotta like seriously calm down. But now I think my friend's coming over and we are gonna watch some musicals hopefully. Definitely in more knee pain today, I think, because of just having to get all the x-rays done and taking my brace on and off and moving my leg around. But nothing unmanageable. Recovery is definitely an up and down process. Hey you guys, today ended up being a really nice night. My friend did come over, but we didn't end up watching any musicals. My cousin Taylor was 
in the area. So we said, oh, good, just come on by. We just talked and had a really nice time. And these are my people, they're my best friends, my support system. Nothing is TMI and we just all feel super comfortable with each other, which is something that's really special. And I don't know if I've ever really had friendships so deep before that I felt just able to be so vulnerable. And so I really, really, really cherish these moments together and these times. Anyway, my poor mom is trying to sleep, so I'm gonna say goodnight. All right, guys, you know the drill. It is Friday, so it is time for PT. My dad is behind the wheel today for the second time this week. You are YouTube famous for the wheelchair modification. <laughs> I was like, mm, you might have to quit your day job and just go into the wheelchair mod. Anyway, I'm feeling a little bit of that side effect from the allergy medication from the um, Katodafin. It was harder for me to get up this morning and I'm still feeling kind of sleepy, but that's how I felt last time and the longer I took it, I got used to it. I'm assuming that's what is going to happen this time, but for now I'm kind of enjoying the extra sleep and I'm wearing my Fitbit. I haven't worn this in a while. This is actually a new one. I got my sister and myself new Fitbits because my new pain specialist wants us to be tracking our heart rates all the time and then emailing him the data every week. He wants to try to tailor my medication around which times my body needs it the most. So I guess we'll see what time of day is my worst time of day. I think it's the morning, but who knows? It's kind of embarrassing though because they give you a little line graph on the app of your heart rate and you can tell every time that I got up to go to the bathroom <laughs> because that's when it like peaks. So that's a little bit embarrassing. Oh, guys, I am just so frustrated right now. The feeding pump just like leaked all over the place again. This is like the second time this week that this has happened to me and it is so bad. It's so, so bad. It's just everywhere. Like, look at this. I've just been trying to rest, and all of a sudden, I was feeling really, really hungry, and I felt my blood sugar drop, and I look, and just, like, everything is just soaked in formula. Like, this is, like, dripping, and it, like, got all on the inside of my bag and, like, all over my stuff. Ew. Ugh. And all over me, of course, which doesn't matter quite as much. But, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start in cleaning this up, and I'm so tired. I do not understand why the connection just won't stay together. It just keeps slipping out of the port. <sighs> Guess I better start cleaning up. The pillows are all soaked. Ugh. This stuff is so nasty and sticky. At least I finally get to go and take a shower. What I really want is to take a bath with my bath crystals. The more I thought about it, the more I was like, I don't know if I can get down and then back up out of the bathtub safely. And no, I really don't think I can, especially with the addition of oils. That's just a little bit too dangerous for me right now. I think I'm gonna have to wait. There's just no way. There's no way I can get down and up without using my upper body and sliding and no. I'm gonna have to just settle for a shower with the shower chair. That's definitely good enough. It is Saturday now. I totally just knocked out after my shower. I was so tired. That was whew, probably one of the most difficult showers I've ever taken. Obviously I had to use a shower chair, but it was still like impossible to move around with my neck and back and then my leg. Whew. But now I'm clean and it feels so very nice. But today has been a new day. I did a little bit of painting earlier to get my mind in a good headspace. And now I'm working on editing this video that you're watching since tomorrow. I actually got some plans. I know, right? It's so stinking rude. My Fitbit keeps <laughs> sending me reminders telling me to get moving. Rude. 
Remind me to turn that feature off. Like I said, I have plans tomorrow, so I'm gonna end this vlog here, and you will get to see what I'm doing tomorrow next week. This week was definitely a better week than last week, and hopefully next week is a better week than this week. But if you enjoyed coming along on this week with me, it'd be awesome if you would hit the thumbs up button, and if you wanna see more and you haven't already, you can subscribe, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.